Hello and uh, welcome to Structural Analysis. This will be our first lecture. I want to talk about this problem and before I go do some introduction. This is uh, basically a simple frame building. Actually, let me bring up the uh, rivet uh, model here. All right, so take a look at this building right here. It's your typical building. You have uh, a, the girder on the outside, right? These are girder right here, and on both sides. And you have these beam, floor beam going across, which are supported by the, which are supported by the girder right here. And then on top of them, you have a five-inch uh, uh, concrete slab. What I want to do in this problem, I want to find out what is the weight on this slab on top of this column, and what is the weight on top of the one of the beam. Uh, inside beam and outside beam, we're going to calculate how much weight is on this girder and bring it back on a column. So we have a W12 by 50 for your floor beam, and then we have a W27 by 178 uh, for your girder, and which is these girder basically supported by the column, and the floor beam are supported by the girder. We want to know how much weight is on this column. And there's a five inch concrete slab on top of it. Uh, before I do this problem, I want to do some introduction. But if you're interested in this problem, just go ahead and uh, forward the video. You can get to it. But let's go ahead and talk about uh, what is the structural analysis, what is the design, and what we're doing, and then how we got here. When you look at a structure, a structure goes through different stages. It starts out from an idea. And it goes off what we call a preliminary uh, structural design. Then once that's all set, in the beginning stage, uh, an architect will come up with the shape, square footage, area, and they put some plan like that together, and they say that's what we have. Once they agree to it, then it hands over to a structural engineer, and a structural engineer, one of the most important things they have to do is calculate the loads. Okay, I'm designing this building. What am I designing it for? Oh, it's going to be a college. Okay, so we're going to have life load of student, and then I have to use that code. And you got to follow a lot of different codes, uh, and then uh, the loads are really uh, complicated. We will talk about that in a minute. Then once the loads are been calculated, then you do a structural design. You go ahead and... Uh, take the member, you design the beam, design the column, design the floor, and you take that design and you do a structural analysis on it. Structural analysis, it will tell you if the design you did is proper. Is it the uh, amount of load you have on that beam, is it going to be stronger than the beam can handle it, or is it going to break the beam? And that's where you have to go on circle, and that's what we're going to do structural analysis. So let's go back and talk about the load. Load types can be divided into a vertical load and horizontal load, or gravity load or lateral load. Now, in a gravity load, it can include dead load, life load, rain load, and uh, snow load. And life load can include also roof life load and uh, floor life load. The uh, lateral load it includes uh, wind load and uh, earthquake load and other load uh, such as uh, earth pressure, water pressure, blast, and impact load. When you look at the beam, the load, loads on beam is given either in pound per foot or kips per foot, or we can say basically it's uh, uh, given in an uh, uh, SI system will be newton uh, uh, per meter or kilonewton uh, per meter. And loads on the floor or a roof is given in pound per square foot or kips per square foot, or an NSI unit will be newton per meter square or kilonewton per meter square. And loads on column is given in pound or kips, or an SI unit will say newton or kilonewton. Again, before we go ahead and calculate, learn how to calculate these load, one thing you got to know ahead of a time is the turbatory area. What is turbatory area? It's basically, uh, it's where each load on a structure is supported entirely by the nearest uh, structural member. Uh, take a look at this example here. We have this uh, bridge, and this is a cross-sectional bridge. 
and has a one, two, three, four, five girder, and girder number two from the uh, uh, my left, and you can see that the turbatory width is halfway between this girder and a girder next to it to the right, and a girder next to it to the left, and that distance will be in this case will be three and a half feet. So your turbatory width is about uh, seven feet. And let's do a couple of examples to kind of clarify this a little bit more. Um, we have this uh, building, seven-story building, and if we look at the floor plan of the building, and this is the floor plan of the building, and at the base size of the base are 25 by 25, and you can see the beam and column layout uh, in this uh, floor plan. Now let's take a portion of this floor, floor plan and kind of uh, blow it up a little bit to make it easier. And uh, we see right here, we got these four different shaded area. Let's calculate the uh, temperature area for them. And let's start out with the, um, uh, the uh, column on the uh, uh, left corner, uh, A1, column A1. So the turbatory area for the column of A1 is going to be halfway, the distance between halfway that column and the next column. And you can, because the column is on a corner, there's nothing on top or to the left of it. So therefore, the turbatory area is available it's, uh, to, uh, to the right and to the uh, uh, south of it. And that's why it's going to be halfway between this column and the next column, and the area is going to come out to become basically 12 and a half by 12 and a half. Moving on over to find out the turbatory area for beam BC1. That's the edge beam. There's nothing on outside of it. Therefore, the only area in front of it that is going to carry the load is between that beam and the next beam over, which is a beam BC2. And the, the, the difference between them is halfway between and about uh, 4.15. Keep going and look at the center column. The turbatory area for this center column is, and look at the center column, and you just measure halfway between this column and the other column all around them. And you end up with this square here. And therefore, your turbatory area, basically self-explanatory right here, is 25 feet by 25 feet. And finally, we can see the, uh, uh, the center beam uh, uh, CD6 and the turbatory area is going to be halfway between that beam and the two beam outside of it, just like the bridge girder. And that's going to come out to uh, 25 by 8.33. And that's your turbatory area. Okay, so we go ahead and let's take this beam CG. This is a CG, and then we have the load on top of it. And we're going to show the load as a uniform distributor load. I'd like to know what is that, and that's got to be pound per foot. And this is supported, basically, we say simply supported. So you have uh, one reaction here, a pin here, and a roller here. We've got to find out how much the weight of the concrete is. Concrete is basically, what is it, 150 pounds per cubic feet. And one thing we want to know, what is the turbatory area for this beam? The turbatory area, as we talked about, is the distance the, uh, uh, between this, halfway between this beam and the next beam, which is right here, and halfway between this beam and the next beam, which is right here. And that's an area that this beam is responsible for supporting. That's where we assign it. So, okay, this is your responsibility for you to carry. This, from here, here is your responsibility and then from there to there. And what is this? So from halfway from here to here, if this is a 10 feet, so halfway is a five feet from here, and another five feet from here. So my tributary width is basically uh, 10 feet. And I'm gonna go ahead and calculate the load. I'm gonna say, okay, uh, for a dead load for the concrete, we're gonna have uh, 150, pound per cubic feet. And if I multiply that by a turbatory area of 10 feet, and the concrete is about five inch thick, so five, let's convert that to a foot, five divided by 12, and let's just go ahead and th that's gonna be per foot. And that's gonna come out to uh, 625 pound per foot. The weight of the beam this beam is a W12 by 50, so that means 50 pound per foot. So let's add uh, 50 pound per foot 
and the total weight is going to be uh, 675. So this right here is going to be 675 pound per foot. Now, if you look at the beam formula, you learned that in static two, uh, we can calculate these reaction easily, which is basically they are W L divided by two for uniform distributive load, and it's on the board. Take a look at it. Or we can simply take a moment about this point and figure that out if you remember that. Let's do that. Take a moment about it so you know that. I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, summation moment about point G is equal to zero. So my counterclockwise rotation, I'm going to assume for myself, is going to be positive. Therefore, I have this load. It's going to rotate about this point, And this distance is, um, this is a 24 feet. So this distance right here is 24 feet, going from here to here. So I'm going to have this RC, and it's going to rotate negative, so it's going to be minus RC times 24. And they have nothing else. And this, I'm going to go ahead and remember, if you have uniform distribution load, we're going to convert it to a constant load. I'm going to make one load out of it right here down center. And that's become 675, basically, which is the 675 times 24. So this going to rotate uh, positive. It's going to be counterclockwise. So it's going to be plus 675 times 24. That's the force itself. And the half distance is 12. And that's it. We don't have anything else equals zero. And I can say RC is equal, uh, which is, comes out to WL divided by 2, 8100. Check my um, math. And if I use WL divided by 2, and that's the same as 675 times L is 24 divided by 2, and that should give me the same price, 81. And that should give me the same number, 8,100 pound. Again, these two both are equal, so I have 8,100 pound on each side. If we look at, um, let's take a look at this beam right here. That's beam DH, which is the outside beam. And let's do this one. All right, this is a D. H and the load, let's figure out the load on top of it. Okay, the turbotry, the amount of responsibility for this beam is this head on this five feet. Because all the way from here to here, that's a 10 feet responsibility of this beam. So all it has, because there's nothing outside of it, so all it has to support is this five feet. And therefore, my equation over there, it's going to be. Uh, 150 pound per cubic feet times 5 feet times 5 divided by 12, and that will give 312.5 pound per foot. And the beam would, it's, weigh, it's uh, the same thing, W12 by uh, 50, so it's a 50 pound. And if I plus 50 pound, that's going to come out to 362.5 uh, pound per foot. So this is going to be 362.5 pound per foot. I'm not going to go ahead and take a moment about this, find out what the reaction is. Just use the equation formula, which is WL divided by 2, which comes out to 362.5 times, this is again 24 feet, same thing, times 24 divided by 2. And that will give me, uh, OK, uh, 4350. Pound. Now, we know the reaction on this end, the reaction on this end, the reaction on this end, the reaction on this end. So let's take the girder uh, EH. Here's a different color here.
kernel E H and it's supported by the column. And let's put a reaction here for the column. And one of what is that? And each end is going to be outside beam, so it's going to be 4350. And then you have this two middle one, one right here and one right here. And that's good, they would be 8100 each. All right. Don't forget the weight of the beam itself. So we got to add the weight of the beam. Let me just use the weight of the beam. Yeah, that's not good. OK, the weight of the beam. This one is dying. It was W12 by 178, so this is right here, 178 pound per foot. So now you have uniform distributed load, weight of the beam itself, 178 pound per foot. Then you have these other beam coming and laying on top of the column, uh, 4350, 8100, 8100, 4350, and we like to know what the reaction is. Luckily, this is a symmetric, so ha this half is equal to that half. So we know, due to the weight of the beam itself, just the beam, uh, weight of the beam, or weight of the girder, is WL divided by 2, which is equal uh, 178 time. And this girder was uh, 10, 10, 10, 30 feet. So this whole thing is a 30 feet. And this is a 30 feet long. So time 30 and divide that by 2. And that comes out to 2,670 pound. And now the Reaction on both ends due to the uh, way these weights because uh, they are uh, symmetrical. So half of them go this side, half of them go the other side. So basically, you can say 8100 plus 4350 is reaction to those. So this is going to come out to uh, these reaction E, R, E, comes out to 4350 plus 8,100, all right, plus 2,670, 15,120 pound on each column. And that's how much the weight's going to be. So this was easy. Calculating this, sometimes you can take a moment about this point and figure it out. Either way is fine. Because the beam was simple, and uh, symmetric, we did it this way. Hope you liked the video. And uh, if you do, give it a thumbs up. And if you have any recommendation, what we can do better, let me know. i see you uh, next week in class. Have a good weekend.